Hey guys, it's Luke again, back with another demonstration of what you can do with the Python programming language. Uh, Python is a new language that I'm taking on. I've started learning it about a week ago, and uh, it's been going really well. I've been able to do a lot of, of cool things with it, and this is another project I just want to show you guys. I used to have a huge uh, DVD Blu-ray collection, but I've gotten rid of that and gone all digital. So my movies are basically uh, digital files that are spread across a bunch of uh, uh, hard drives. I used to dump all of that kind of directory information into Excel spreadsheets to kind of keep track of what I got and where it's sitting. Uh, but that wasn't very productive or very cool. So I decided that one of the projects I'm going to do with Python is to create a program to kind of catalog my, my movie collection. So. This is uh, the result of kind of version one of my movies database. Um, you can see that I've, I've added cover art and a lot more information than just title, uh, drive location, and, and file size. Um, all of this is stored in the, uh, uh, the program's database. So uh, uh, it keeps it in one place and it makes browsing it a lot, a lot nicer. One of the best things about uh, a program like this, and, and because I'm doing it myself, I can basically do whatever the heck I want. I've integrated it into the IMDB um, uh, website to kind of pull all of the extra data out of it. And, and these things include things like release dates, uh, the IMDB rating, the storyline, a summary of the plot, if there is one, uh, credit info, things like that. So as long as I put in a, an IMDB number, I can go ahead and pull all of this uh, automatically, and I can even pull the cover art uh, off the site uh, if I if I wanted to. So basically, the way the database works is that I can just go through it sequentially. Right now, I have not uh, added all of my collection. There's only about 40 or 50 movies in here, um, but you can see that I can go forwards and backwards. Some of these have uh, data in them already. Others uh, is only partially filled out. Um, I also put this random kind of uh, button in there just so that if I ever wanted to find a random movie to watch for the night, I can just click random and it'll spit out something that I can uh, look at. So in one of the first versions of my program, um, the storyline and the plot summary was kind of the same. So you can see here that the text is exactly the same. But I've changed it so that uh, it's now grabbing kind of like a, 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 an actual summary of the plot. So let me show you, let's see if this one has it. Um, basically, if I had an IMDB number for this movie and I click this globe button, uh, you can see the tooltip says download IMDB data. It goes out and pulls everything. And you can see that the plot summary here got updated and it's a lot longer, right? Now I can just click update and it's done. If I go to something that doesn't have you know, any information, let me see if I got a couple of those, I should. You can see, like, like right here, Life of Pi. There's no rating. The release date is just a year. Nothing else is filled in. Uh, but I do have the, the IMDb number. So if I click that, it'll automatically go out to IMDb, query all of the data, and fill it in. And I can update my database. So that's that's pretty cool. I separated the downloading of the data and the updating to make it kind of like two clicks just because I don't want it to grab stuff and kind of do it automatically because it may put in stuff that I don't want. So that's why I kind of separated it so that it gives me a chance to kind of look at what I'm putting into my database. Um, I can obviously search for movies. Right now it's only searching on the name of the movie and the summary text, but you can see that because I have all these data in there, I can basically search for any field that I want to. Um, the result set is kind of ugly right now. It's just three columns of data. I can obviously uh, tweak this to make it show anything I want to, but you can see that it, it works. Um, but this is the one area I need to do a little bit more work on. I can add a movie by clicking on this uh, uh, add new movie icon, and it will allow me to enter you know all of this information in one movie at a time. I probably won't do that. I'll just grab my Excel files for the different drives and just do a mass import into the database and then start filling in the information uh, by connecting to IMDB. One of the coolest things about this program that I'm really proud of is that I've linked it to the reviews of IMDB, 
but I've stripped out all of the crap, you know, all the ads, all the extra images, uh, what have you, junk that you don't really need. Uh, so if I click on this button right here, read reviews, it pops up uh, just the review text that I can read, peruse at my, my leisure. So here it is. Now, since this is a full-fledged uh, Windows app, I can resize the window, I can move things around, and do all of that. So you can see here that the review is basically just people's review uh, of this particular movie. And the nice thing is that it takes out all the crap, you know, so I can read just just the text. Uh, this makes kind of the movie viewing experience that much better when you when you have something like this and, and not be distracted by uh, all the extra stuff that comes on a web page. But in any case, this is uh, one of my latest projects. I'm going to be doing a lot more. I hope you uh, you get a, a kick out of watching what you can do with Python. If I were doing this in, I don't know, Java or C++, it would be five to six times uh, the code base. This particular program at this stage is just over a thousand lines of code, which is amazing to consider it's a full-fledged graphical user interface program and has all of these connectivities to the internet and database. Uh, for those of you that are curious, I'm programming this in Python 3. I'm using the Qt uh, binding for Python, PyQt4. There is a version of PyQt5, but I haven't migrated uh, the program to that yet. It's, it's pretty trivial to do, and I may do that in the near future. For the HTML parsing, I'm using Beautiful Soup 4. That works really well. And for the backend database, I'm using a SQLite database uh, via the SQLite 3 module. So if you have any questions on Python or how I put this particular program together, feel free to drop me a comment and I'll do my best to answer it. Uh, again, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy.